So, a very good afternoon to all the viewers. And just having a look at, we're just waiting for the first team teams to come out. And having a look at those statistics, you can see that Paul Gymnasium have somewhat dominated over the last 10 matches. Those were not 10 years, in fact, because they have played twice in one year as well. And if we look at the Springboks that have come out of these schools, well, two very good Springboks for Odenikwa High School as well in Jan Yenis and Marco Wenzel. The Paul Gymnasium, going back many, many years, as we can see, right to 1906, have produced a flurry of Springboks, including the current Springbok captain, Jean de Villiers, and uh, along with Scott Berger, and of course, Quibus Visser, whose uh, nephew is down to be on the replacement bench today for the first team. The team that will run out first will be this team here, coached by Christoph Lotter, the former Bullant, and Grickwis Scrumhoff. And this is a most useful combination. Four of those players played in the Craven Week last year and presumably will be close to doing it this year as well. Oto Nikwa Wurskwal, coached by Pit Kluti. And uh, they have a look out for number 12, Warwick Gallant, who apparently is a real, real, real star for the future. Quite perfect day down here in George as well. We couldn't have asked for more. Absolutely windless. And as usual, you can see the, the line of honor from all the young pupils. Well, we've got to call them learners these days, I think. And you'll see plenty of girls amongst them because both of these schools are co-educational. And in fact, there are more girls at this school for gymnasium than boys. Led out by Rikas Bokma, the captain who Played for Western Province at Craven Week level. And just look at that, lots of smiles from them. This is a big occasion for them. Last year they drew 17 all with Otaniqua in one game and lost the second one. But of course, in amongst all the war cries and all the little things that happen on the field as well. And this is Kyo Malan bringing out the Otaniqua side. See, they all come out holding the badge of the school that they represent. And at the moment, are the number one ranked school in the country. Paul Gymnasium are ranked at number three. So we have a mouth-watering tussle that awaits us That's pretty soon. Kabani Bobo is uh, alongside me today as well. And you, Chap, have played at Craven Week level for Border when you were at Dale and for Western Province when you were at Ronnebosch. That, I guess, could well be an aspiration for players that are playing right now. That's got to be a step up, surely. Oh, it's a momentous occasion playing amidst all these derby games, the Inter Premier Schools. It is what it is. And basically, once we come to this equation of coming playing against the most dominant side in the worst southwest districts and from western province the two teams meet together and it's always going to be something that the players want to set up their targets to engage themselves and play at the higher level and will provincial side will be pretty much where you want to start off and then lead yourself on and hopefully get those owners of playing for ac schools well that man there in picture comes from just across the mountain so bringing a local flavor jason jafter comes from prince albert the little hamlet it's called and he of course has been involved with super rugby duties recently as well so premier into schools this wonderful innovation it's the kickoff both teams really boast very powerful packs of forwards the pole gym one probably more mobile than otonikwa otonikwa bigger than so it really makes it quite interesting and there were some changes in the pole gym team that are very late. We heard about them this morning. They've had to reshuffle with Wano Fasaki having cried off. So there's been three moves, and Wyatt Murphy has moved to fullback from the flyer position. He's actually a scrum off, and his dad was telling me that he was unnamed for six months until his dad went to watch a Wyatt Earp movie, a Western, and said, My son will be called Wyatt. So he's at fullback today. Good recovery work there from Brendan Nell at Skomar for Chamis, as they called. 
This is J.D. Schickling. He's the biggest man on the field at uh, 204 meters. So that's very close to being the size of big Andres Becker. Schickling, who played SA Schools last week. But at the moment, the Ota Nikwa pack really just getting stuck in. Much lateral movement there from Paul Jim. This is the kick downfield from Wyatt Murphy. Well fielded by Dilval Himan. He's the smallest guy on the field. Dilval Himan. He's just 65 kilograms. Well, that's a victory for the small man in the game of rugby. There's another star as well. Duan Fonamarva. He, he could be playing in the lock position, Kabani. He's, uh, he's one for nine four. Oh, he's big enough. He carries the ball very strongly. AC Schools player too. Lots of talent in the back line of the Otaniko, the Quachas, as they intimately known from the side. Well, that was good pressure at the breakdown point there from Otaniko. It's won them a penalty. The ball was held on. Players uh, have to show daylight before competing for the ball. Oh, Vena Tineka, the big man. It's going to be strong, especially vital in those counter racking and making sure that they put the numbers and the pressure in those breakdown for the Otaniko's. Well, this fellow, I told you, is 65 kilograms. He's just kicked that ball out quite beautifully. And uh, Vainat is twice his, twice his weight at 128. He's outstanding in terms of his skills. Saw him at the Krebenik last year. Carved up loads of teams with the way that he plays. Great piece of footwork on him. Monday Dwitter's throw-in is intercepted by Paul Jim. Mobility is really what this Paul Jim team is about. Christoph Lotte has got them... There's a lot of skills in this team, but they've really got a match up up front, I think, to lay the foundation. Jason Jafter playing at Varnage. But it's over. This is Walter Smith with a kick downfield. <laughs> Running from the back there was Henny Barnard, but uh, it's just got a little bit messy now on the big charge downfield. This is really good play there from the scrum off Emu Milan. So they'll come back there for the little knock on. Oh, a bit scrappy, but the pressure and the pace already for this game, intensity is lifted. Both players very passionate about the kick chase. Good return back from Henny Bernard. But the tackle and the harassing of the breakdown. Kick coming through there from Rian Ostays and the vice captain of the side. But Remy Milan, one of the star players and a key player for Otaniqua, trying to keep the ball alive. The referee felt the ball was lost in contact by the outside centre, Grant Himanis. He himself, he was down to play fullback. He's had to move into the centre position, Grant Himanis. Big crowd here today as well. I spoke to the headmaster of Otaniqua. Christo Forster, and he said, well, it could well be about 6,000 people. So, inter schools, Premier Inter Schools Rugby brought to us by Mutual and Federal, and a great opportunity for young boys to get exposed, and the school itself as well. Oh, it's beautiful. It's the parents and, and the friends and the brothers and sisters supporting the young ones over here. So a little bit of patience shown there, that's that's good play, and then a big kick downfield. Has that been knocked on now? That will be the question that will be asked. Jason yeah, Jafter just was looking up, I think he's made a call on that being a knock on, so it will be a scrum this for Ojanikwa. What a kick from Warwick Gillon, not getting himself underneath the ball there by Warwick Murphy, losing forward, Dylan Fairbridge, a bit lucky not to be penalised for offside. After the man had left the ball off his hand. So very few scrums thus far in the match. Putting coming from Remu Mulan. Held at the back by Dian Kun. And the right winger Leighton Extian was involved too. Now look at this little fella that he's so fleet of foot. Nippy little player at flower of his Devald Himan. But what Paul Jim are doing right now is that, uh, well, they haven't done it on that occasion. They looked at counter-attacking as well. This is Dylan for the Maverick. And he, of course, played this at schools last year. as the top try scorer there too, and he's a really big fella. Playing on the left wing. 
fact, they could use him in the lineouts, I'm sure. Eh? Uh, he's, he's a good option. He's <laughs> a big man, strong as a ball carrier, too. That knock on came from Vainat de Necca. Yeah, already we've seen uh, the intent of impetus attack from Dieval Heman. But yeah, they lose the ball, pass a bit hard to catch for the big man, Vainant de Necca. He'd be disappointed, but Nice get the chance to reprieve himself with the scrum. Coach! Big Coach. tight head. Interesting call of set in the scrums Fine. for the schoolboys. They find for the safety, and it's an easy call scrum. Nice pick up at the back by Rikas Borkmaet, the captain. Now, this is a man who's also got pace. We spoke about the speed of this back line. I think they're in touch there now. And Jason Jackler says, play on. Right. This is the big chase. That'll be a scrum fire for the attacking team to put the ball in. So a good opportunity this for Paul Jim. Oh, what a great blindside move from Paul Jim. Looking to bring the pacey man onto the ball. Dylan Faberidge looks out for his outside. Bad lever close. And the tackle and support play coming from the flanker. Keeping up with the play, Jacques Vermillion. And that man already, we've mentioned his name. Geoval. Human sorting it out, kicking it over. Five oh. meter scrum, lots of under pressure. Strong scrum needed, and Brendan Hill got one as well. Now, where do they bring, who do they bring in here? That occasion, Ryan Wistazen. Just must make sure they don't make any mistakes here. They'll use the big fellow, Jacques Vermeulen, one of them, of course. And then JD Schickeling, he didn't receive it on that occasion. Well, the forwards have to help the backline players of Paul Jim as well when they get into tight situations. Otherwise, they're going to lose possession. Is it one? Players being held up at the moment. So, has that ball gone to ground? And is it still with Paul Jim? No, it's not. So, the problem Ball, is use it or lose it. Or lose it. Warwick Gillant there, the vice captain, the captain of the World Champions, Junior Champions, seven aside that won last year. This year, actually, being coached Thanks, by Myra Schumann, who's an old boy of Paul Jim, he went in there and he chose Warwick Gillant, the captain, for his side, for the seven side, showing lots of experience, keeping the man up, turning over that Coach. ball. It's great work from the experienced player, Fine. already played for Easter schools, and it's some, something for the future. I'm looking forward to this player growing up the stages of this rank. Well, they've got out of jail. Yeah, that's very good play, that from Dion Quinn. Kicks it downfield, the number eight. Now, which way does this bounce? Towards the touchline is what he would have wanted, and that's in fact just happened. But good play this from Wyatt Murphy. Just very, very calm under pressure. Shows the experience of the young man playing at fullback today. Great pick up and go. It's a great play. He wants to keep the ball in front of his forwards. Dian Kuhn putting that kick. But what a great composure from the young man, Wyatt Murphy. Calm and composed, getting his touchline. I said Wyatt Earp was always a composed man as well in the westerns that you might have watched. <laughs> <laughs> a leaf out of his book. Well, I'm just a little bit messy in that line out. So they'll have a scrum. Uh, having a tall man like Shikering, Jacques Vermeulen, instrumental in terms of competing in that line out. Do you have a choice nowadays if you knock the ball outside? You can either go for the scrum or the line out. And Paul Jim chose to go for the scrum. They've also Boy. got uh, the Oak Neckwear, have also got a big fellow in Edward Zandbach. He's at two down. meters too, hey. so hey. he's competing with Schickeling. Two you. premier line out jumpers. Brendan Nell. Schickeling again. They use him a lot down the middle of the field. Carry the ball up. Difficult man to bring down. Key thing for Paul Jim, I think, is to bridge that early defensive line. If they do that, they'll be very difficult to stop because of the pace that they've got in the back line. Play on. This time the ball, uh, not a great pass once again. Jacques from Yellen trying to no! set up things for the next phase. He's okay. done really well as the open sider. Oh, an extra man here up for Ryan Westhazen. Back in field, that's good play by him. Pounced off there. DJ from Nickak really doing well to carry that up, but they've gone and wasted things there. Have Paul Jim. They've got to a point on three occasions now. 
Cavani, where they actually really just have not carried it through. Oh, they breached the line with some great skills coming from Ryan Ostays and offloading in the tackle and the support from the big uh -huh. man gives Devil him a bit of a heave. But now this is when they need that accuracy at the clean, yeah. Yeah. which they didn't Lay get, now it takes away the momentum they had. Well, yeah. Karate, I thought Lay. that was going over Schickeling's head, but he just stuck and up it's over. a big, big paw, pulled it down again. So the runouts are looking good now. There's a penalty advantage here to Paul Gymnasium. You're done at seven. And that'll continue for a while. Let's just wait and see how long. Oh, there, there goes the whistle. So they'll take the penalty now. And it certainly is in kickable Seven, range. Falling over and slowing ball down. I get to a deal for it, don't you? Tight game good? this, Kobani. I tell you what, no score at the moment. 11 minutes gone. But they're going to decide to kick it well. So it'll be White Murphy up. with the kick. Right decision? Oh, Rick has bought, but great decision away from home. We want to settle the team down. Any points that you can get when you get inside the half of Otaniqua Park, you want, to give, you want to give them a bit of pressure by putting the points and piling on those points, which will start becoming a pressure on them. So you convert the pressure that you had in position into points. White Murphy does have an opportunity now to put them ahead. So it's an angled kick. And the first opportunity for either team so interesting these days with players able to play in multi positions mentioned this fellow he's a scrum off actually down to play fly off today shifted to fullback and goal kicker struck it beautifully that's a magnificent kick what a way to start your game uh, white murphy well measured black youngster see the way he stroked that ball just composing his kicking a lot to hear about him. Very confident kind of player. And kicking just so important in the modern game as well. You've just got to get take your opportunities. As you say, just stroke that through quite beautifully. Devald Himon with the kickoff. Has that gone 10 meters? Yes, it has. It's a super kick. And again, you can see Paul Gymnasium feeding off those little errors or when the ball is not held. By Otaniqua. The Otaniqua team actually called the Quachas. Oh, the so, Quachas. You know what a Quacha is, eh? Or was? Yeah, well, I guess before extension. Extension, and now uh, it was a duck coated zebra, isn't it? That's what it was. And uh, I suppose okay, somebody could probably correct us with a, a few more technical <laughs> terms around it. Uh, I guess. It was hunted into extinction. Yeah. Maybe had an extra strike or something. Fine. Yeah, I think they. Somewhere along the line, being busy with trying to recreate. Hey, Quacha. Now, was that pass forward? Yep, very well picked up. Jason Jafter's positioning there was quite perfect. Staying in the running line so he could see himself. Bearing in mind he's got assistant referees to help too, but have a look at this. Oh, great positioning from the referee. And yes, it was a forward pass. But enjoy the way that he changed his angle of running by Warwick Gallant. Picking up the space in between the two centers. But the referee well positioned. Just the Close. experience of the man. And I think the players know that Fine. too. You know, they've got a man here who's been refereeing Super Rugby. They know they're going to get the right deal. He's not going to make any glaring errors. Not that referees do it ever on purpose, but it does happen. Perhaps with lesser experienced referees. Schickling carrying it up. Good play by the Paul Gymnasium forwards. Getting there quickly to protect the ball. Then it, obviously, it's really important to dominate possession as much as you can, but then to use it effectively. Down the line there from Walter Smith. And they found a bit of space here as well. There's another man with pace on the right wing, Leviel Chaus. Oh, that's a super pass. And a little pop-up. Now, can they get a great defense there from the Quakas? But eventually, the damn wall broke. What play from the back line of Khimis there. The way they adjust themselves, get themselves in the right positioning, ball beating the man, 
giving him to lots of space there for the winger. Comes back on the inside, the support player coming again from the Grant Hermanis and the offload of the tackle. Durinal over the advantage line, they've breached the advantage line. Space for him to score the try. Great try coming in from Paul Jim. Great patience, great skills all of Sean around. And Christopher Lott will be very happy with the skills that are shown by his back line. Right, Murphy, no problem with the conversion. So they're into double figures of oh, Paul Gymnasium. The patience, the mindset of these players to keep the ball alive in contact. They've already breached the defensive line. Now it's always going to be hard for the Quakers to get the defensive line in, in check after they've been breached. And Duran now takes full advantage of that and he profits at the try next to the poles. Nine! Thank you. Jacques Vermeulen with a feed, with a catch rather. Oh, and then a charge down. Walter Smith That's just uh, taking his time with that uh, kick. Stop! Well, they're doing the basics right. Oh, Paul Gymnasium this time from White Murphy yeah, with a very good kick towards or up to the 10 meter line. I'd be happy with the exit play after the charge down. Calm the things down. Man is normally used to playing at 10 and at 9. And the Quakers are still a bit shell shocked with that try. All their supporters there you see in the main pavilion and there are many others around the field. All the, I want to call them school kids. I suppose you can call them that, but they're actually officially learners. And they are taught by educators. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's always talking about teachers. Sorry. From the scrum. The breakdown, rather. Remember Milan's pass going astray. This is Devon Himan. We'll have a look at this man. He's got such a feet. Beautiful stepping. Release! Bonnet! 13. So another chance. He keeps people busy, this little fella. Got support coming as well in the form of Stefan Conlon. He's also a big chap at 132 kilograms. Release, roll. That's bigger than the Stormers props. You see it's a strong tackle that from Ryan Westhazen. But they're going to come back here for a penalty. And I suppose I'd ask the same question of you, Kobani. Do they kick a goal as well? Basically, you stay with your same philosophy oh, that you mentioned just now. Definitely have to keep close to that scoreline. And any easy points that you get awarded from ill discipline from the other side, you punish them, making sure that they know they have to stay honest. And every time that you do get a chance to put the points on, you go for it. So, a great decision coming from Prior Milan, the captain, the number six, his vice captain now taking the kick. Saw him kicking out of hand just now. He's got a really big boot. He's gone in quite close as uh, Warwick Gallant. Learned a little bit from Percy Montgomery. Just two steps, and that should be good enough. Yeah, laws of averages. Less mistakes. And he's done just that. Well done. Warwick Gallant has got his team onto the board. Well, I suppose both sets of spectators will become vociferous at some point in time. While offloading the tackle, man not coming, not getting away from the channel. It's going to be sported by the experienced referee, not rolling away quickly enough. Penalty incurred. Walter Smith's kick is right onto the touchline. Well fielded there by Henry Storm. Sometimes it takes teams, some teams, a little bit longer to get into the swing of things. Hota Nikwa just uh, have seemed to struggle a little bit to get rhythm going. They've opened up opportunities as well for Paul Gymnasium, which uh, they've grabbed with a one good try and uh, also with the penalty. This time it's the Quakas who have transgressed. Yes, he has no. They may.
strafschop gehad, so bal vast, hard loop in, ek kon nie sien dat het getrekke het, stap die in die bos. So waarschuw, volg nou loop. That's a good warning there from Jason Jafta. Well explained to the team. He wanted to make sure that they understood the reason why and what consequences there will be if it happens another time. Yeah, just to calm the people down. It's a good tackle. Didn't leave the man. They did get a chance and opportunity now because the guys were diving in, not supporting their body feet. And the all is an instigator with the man coming in in the last minute and pushing the player away. I guess you want to keep it within the schools and laws, and especially in terms of sportsmanship and camaraderie of rugby. Well, you know, big games like this are, are always very tense. There's often uh, a few handbags that are thrown. <laughs> That's part of the game. Certainly both these teams have the ability to run and run well. One of the reasons why they're number one and number three, respectively, in South Africa. That's the little chip kick. Now, which way does... Well, if that had bounced in the other direction, it was Dylan Fairbridge that was flying up there, that man in picture. Well, quickness of mind from Grant Manus. So the pass is a bit long. Decided to put the ball on the foot. But I know they can compete at line-out time as well, with Schickeling. Yeah, well, just, just changing a bit of tactic, putting the pressure back on. Henry Storm with a catch for the Crockers. Vital catch that as well. Back from Milan. And Hibbon's kicked downfield. Anyway. He's kicked at some distance for a little fella. Oh, he's got rhythm in his kicking, strikes the ball very well. But he's a tennis player. So he does have the feel of the game. He's a youngster who came from Uniondale on a tennis bursary to the school and then decided at some stage that he would like to also play rugby. Hey, well, he's playing it very well too. You know, it's a Nicholas side. They certainly need his expertise and the abilities of their pack of forwards as well. Long pass from Barnard. This is Barnard again in picture. That ball not kept in field, so it'll be a throw in to Paul Jim. Well, both teams willing to throw the ball around and give it some air. Just a schoolboy's mantra. Staying positive with ball Feet. in hand. Throwing from Volna Conradi. Oh, that's gonna miss uh, Otoniko with a chance. All neatly held up there by Rumi Mulan. Also, a very live wire scrum off. Modena Buerta down to Warwick Gallant. Didn't quite get through the tackles, but I think that might be a steal. No, the referee's arm is out. It's probably also for playing the ball on the ground, so penalty advantage here to Otonekwa. Long pass from him and beautifully plucked out of the air by Grindling. Still from Grindling at 132 kilograms. I hope he's in the trick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on Deneka alongside him to 129. Wow. So there's going to be a penalty uh, and a chance for Otonekwa if they follow Kobani Bobo's suggestions that they kick it goal. Let's wait and see. Is that too far out? No, uh, not too far out. Well, especially the man on the size of Warwick Gillant. Man not rolling away from the contact. Ryan Oster isn't not rolling away. They made the tackle there in the inside center. He has to move. He has to show that he can move and get away from that play. Makes it hard to set the targets for now for Otoniko to clean the ball past there. It's a well sported again by the referee. Shows his experience again. Jason Jafter. He's your man. And here's the Otoniqua, or Kwaka's man, or a gallant. Pete Clutty, the coach, is really hoping for a successful kick at Golia to narrow that lead. My goodness, it looked pretty much like it was going straight, and then it just seemed to just 
Buzz off to the right hand side. Oh, it was a different flight on that ball. It sort of moved in a different way, curled outside, changed his, his standing uh, stance, took more steps because of the distance so that he can create the power of his leg. But still a great effort. Oh, you know, the strange thing is that sometimes if you have the right technique, it's not that necessary to do that. However, we also know that Percy Montgomery has sort of perfected that. Wasn't able to kick that fight, but it's Gallant again. Great running that by Gallant. Just brought Doskuma in. It's going to be another penalty. So Otanikwa are really putting the pressure on Paul Jim at the moment. Gallant looks up, shows his skills. He's a seventh man by trade too. But the way he carries the ball in two hands now, support coming in, Leighton Exton getting high tackle by Jacques Vermillion. And now he does get a closer chance and opportunity to convert his massive run that he's just had. Very confident running there, taking on the forwards, knowing that he does have the footwork on them and then still be able to offload and tackle. And the space is just being created as well by a good foundation from the forwards. Ball just dropped over, and there's no real win to speak of, yeah. But of course, with those massive kicking tees that <laughs> are uh, very common these days. Well, that's got a little bit of a fade on it as well, but it was well managed by Gallant, and important for them. They've reduced that lead to just four points. Right, Gallant is a talent. Leighton Exton getting taken around the neck there by Jacques Vermeulen. Above the shoulders will always be deemed a dangerous tackle. Something he has to look off in terms of his technique into the tackle. Well, Premier Inter Schools brings us lots of excitement, doesn't it? And although we just have the one try at the moment, there's plenty of action with these two teams. Well taken by the little scrum half. Uh, rather, it wasn't the scrum half, it was... Uh, it was Hill Milan, I think, with the catch. Yeah, the captain. Yeah. From the kickoff. But slow in getting up. Downfield here from Diewald Himon. Well fielded by Rikas Botma. Now oh, White Murphy. Chip and chase. It's gone maybe a little too far, that one. So Diewald Himon calls 10 for 15, 15, the mark. 30. Uh, you'll probably have looked for more height in terms of an up and under, not a, such a flat kick, which is harder to chase. I think he maybe just wanted to create the chip and chase rather than a, a big one and maybe just overcooked it a bit. That's a very good kick that from Diewald Himan. Really is an accomplished little player, isn't he? Oh, what a pick up from that pass from the scrum off. Made it look so easy and then the clearance off the field. It's very composed, it's always talking, can see he's a leader. And as an experienced man, he's played Kravenik already. And that's a farmer's dream. <laughs> <laughs> the crop sprayer <laughs> alongside the field. Well, Lucas Butner was not unable to hold on to that, but now there's a penalty to Paul Gymnasium. This is too far out to kick a goal, I would assume. But a number of penalties here, and there was a real clash with those two players. Oh, the Rickus Botman pass was not sympathetic. But now having the second bite of the cherry, losing his footing, Dion Kuhn, the eighth man. So that's the two captains who are down at the moment with injuries. Oh, a bit wounded, I guess. And the other one took a knock. You're right. And his family jewels. You're right. Kiel Milan, yes, and, uh, that's Rikas Botman, okay, who's both back on their feet, so good to see the two captains. And those are the learners from yep. Paul Gymnasium. Okay. Seem to be rather quiet at the okay, moment. Yeah, momentum swung a bit. Gallant being part of the reason, the way he's been attacking and kicking for the poles. He can still feel the threat that now Motonik was bringing back on the, the number one rate to school in the okay. Mutual and Federal Premier yeah, Inter Schools. Now this is interesting, yeah. Four. The he must Three. call for a mark right up against Three. the touchline and there was no one in sight, so he could well have just taken his time, caught it, got the right angle and kicked it down. As a result, this is not out. And lots of room here for Paul Gymnasium to move in.
That's a good field position as well for them. Yep. I think in most matches you'll see a lot of Jacques Vermeulen and Rikas Bortmaier's loose forwards along with Gareth Saliers for Paul Gymnasium. Ryan Westhuizen's made quite a nuisance of himself both offensively and defensively in this match. It's a beautiful pickup, wasn't it? And a great run as well. Where's the support? It needed to be closer in. Well, here it comes now, shickling. Right up in the back line there is uh, White Murphy as well. Now it's over to the big fellas, Gavin van den Berg. Out from Brendan Nell. West Eisen, the long pass. Oh. And eventually Dylan Fairbridge couldn't grab it, but they're going to come back for a penalty. So referee playing advantage. Five and ten card now sent Five for and a centre with the long pass. Leon. Oh, here's a quick take. Have a look at this now. Oh, it's Nick. We're ready for it. No, they're not. Shot for Mielin's over. Oh, you've mentioned the devastation of the two ball carriers of this pack of Paul Jim. Jacques Vermeulen and Rickers both, man. And Jacques Vermeulen complimenting us with that run. Stepping on the inside. Carries lots of strength, stretch to the try. Great play, taking them out of, not waiting for that. Duran now takes a quick tap. And they change the momentum swinging again to Paul Jim, are scoring the second try of the game. And that sometimes counts for a lot as well. If you know you can bridge the opponent's line and the opponents can only really get points through penalties, it perhaps mentally says quite a lot to you as well, providing advantages. There's the, the brains trust of uh, Paul Gymnasium. Oh. Kept very cool and calm underneath those hats. Hendrik Weber also supporting Christoph Lotter. So White Murphy. Can he get this straight? That's another good kick from the fullback. Well, shot for me and Darren now sported opportunity. Saw they were not ready. Otanikwa. For million scores, the second try for Paul Jim. Successful kicking provides you with just that sort of leverage. Have a look at that. Suddenly they're up to 17. So it's 11 points the difference. Back in field it comes. Paul Gymnasium oh. using the opportunities that are presented to them with those two tries by Nellen for Mielen. Also using the width of the field when it's been right to use it. And we are finding space through as well. Warwick Gallant trying to take that ball away. So a whole pile of knock-ons. Referee waiting for advantage. Well, here he comes again. Divad, he might. Can he make a difference? He has a possibility of a try. And there they go. Leighton X team. It is who's got over. What a jam. What a play. Turn of the ball, most dangerous ball on the rugby field, unpredictable line that you have to run against. And Diego Himman takes full advantage. Ball gets lost, he takes it up, carries in two hands, shows the clean pair of heels, but the timing of the pass, outstanding. And Leighton Exton just had to dive over. Great play from the number 10, and what a finish from the winger. Just look at the pace in that back line. I'll tell you what, Leighton Exton, who come from the right wing, he was on in the left-hand side, found his way in. But again, it just shows you as well, Kobani, just how susceptible you can be just after you've scored points. We oh, know good. that you've got to really focus and concentrate. Oh, you let your, your, your guard down. You start thinking about the promotions of the fact that you've scored the try and you're all gallant and you're all violent and you want to come out and then you lose a bit of concentration. Turnover ball, very difficult to defend. Talking about gallant. Let's have a look and see whether... Talant can get this over. Struck it well, but not straight enough. Is kicking going to be the difference in this match? We hope not. Oh, this is a pleasure to see the way he carries the ball up. The pickup was seamless, straight into his hands. Man looks up, he says, what? 
I've got a lot of pace. I'm going to show you how to do this. Creates the space. The timing of the pass outstanding from the fly off. Devil Human etched in in the corner. This is what makes schoolboy rugby so attractive as well. Is to have players like these. Well, Ojanikwa deciding not to catch that ball. Could have been really dangerous for them. Downfield from Henny Barnard. Uh, fullback gets a favorable bounce to oh, the perfect bounce. Oh, goodness, that's got a full 50 meters. Uh, lots of communication, but Henny Barnard says it's okay, boys. We're gonna go to the 22 just now. Let me just put the foot on the ball. I'll tell you what, this is a very big field as well. And Gabani, you were actually mentioning about the in goal area, how big it is. That provides you with, uh, it brings a different dynamic to the game sometimes as well, you know, with grubber kicks through and also being able to run around and score closer to the pass. Yeah. That sort of thing can make quite a difference. So, there, straight into touch it goes from Brendan L because he knows it's half time and he's happy to go into half time with that lead then, which has been shortened somewhat with that try by X-Team. Nevertheless, a very, very tough first half this from both teams. So we'll wait then for confirmation then of this halftime scoreline here between these two schools. 19-11 it is. Oh, not 19-11. 17-11 it is. Lots to play for in the second half.